When you pray, what does that normally look like? I think for me there are a bunch of different ways. There are times during the day where I intentionally carve out time to pray. These are a little longer, often with specific things on my mind. I have a pretty good list of things, and I'll bet you do too. But there are other times, though, that I carve out time, like, like when I spend time alone with God reading the Bible and listening and praying. This is different for me. I, I don't pray through my list at this point. But here, I talk to God about what He brings up in my Bible reading. This looks different than sitting down going through my list. Someone once said to me, if you just read your Bible and God is speaking to you, why do you change the subject as soon as you get a chance to talk? How rude is that? Talk about what God started the conversation about. So I do that too. And, and then there's the, the, over the course of the day, the quick, short prayers, the, the ones in the moment. Somebody has called these the hand grenade prayers or the javelin prayers. We throw them up to God. Very specific, very quick. But there's other times during the day where we intentionally stop and we pray with somebody. I've said before, let's stop saying, I'll pray for you and walk away. We usually end up forgetting. But let's stop and pray for people right then. We all know these different kind of prayers. Oh, and, and of course there's the super common one word prayer, help! I, I don't need to tell you that all of this. I guess I wanted to just validate all of them. Talk to God. He walks with you. Walk with Him. Chit chat with Him. And have longer conversations with Him. Both, all, all of this is incredibly valuable. Well, here's a mental picture I'd love for you to paste in your mind. Picture yourself as in between people and God. On one hand, holding hands with God. On the other hand, holding on to people, on to situations, supporting needs, embracing your world. You are the link. You are the go-between. You are the intercessor. Here's a couple of examples. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 18, when God comes to Abraham and to let him know about Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham begins to pray for the people in these cities. And, and God actually engages him in the conversation about these people there. And God allows Abraham to be in on the conversation about his plan. And Abraham actually stands between these cities and God. Abraham holding tightly to God with one hand, figuratively, and the other hand with these people. He lifts them up before God. And God allows him to affect the decisions. This picture really is Abraham bringing stuff from people to God. It's flowing this way. It, it's our needs to God, our needs to God. But the prayer in Nehemiah chapter 1 starts that same way. Nehemiah is bringing the desperate situation to God. But it ends up the opposite. He starts by bringing God's people's needs to God. And he prays, standing between the people and God, basically says, here's what we think, God. Uh, what do you want? And the cool thing here is he hears from God. And he actually takes God's plan to the people. He intercedes between them on behalf of the people, a nation, uh, a city. But standing in the middle here, he ends up taking God's stuff to the people. Sometimes our desires to God, this time God's desires to people. Okay, bring this closer to home. We have friends who are sick, needy, ongoing trouble, or maybe it's me and my illness, or our church. Our normal thought process to stand the gap here is to ask God to deliver us, to heal us, to do a miracle for us, to fix the problem so the problem's gone, right? I'm standing in between like this in prayer. This is important. Take our needs and requests to Him. He's told us to do this. But as we pray, think about this too. As I stand between this person or this situation and God, let's honestly seek God's perspective on whatever it is. Not just our perspective. God, here's the needs of the people. Here's what we think. Here's this situation. Here's what we think, God. What do you think? And then stop and listen. What is God's plan? What is God's purpose? What is God's heart? And when we hear from God, to take that back the other way, back to the people. What did Jesus teach us? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I wonder if most of our prayers are more like, 
my will be done in heaven as it should be on earth. No, it's not that. It's Jesus, it's Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God speaks, God acts, God involves you in the process. Let's get busy, let's engage in God's process on God's agenda, not our own agenda. Will you stand in the gap as an intercessor in both directions? One important aspect of prayer is simply partnering with God in what He is going to do. Will you stand in the gap? Become God's agent on earth, an agent of His will. And that starts in prayer.